desirable properties of plasmids as cloning vehicles. In gene cloning procedure, when we are going to use plasmids as a cloning vectors, then it must contain some uh, suitable traits. For example, it must have low molecular weight. Secondly, ability to confer selectable phenotypes on the recipient cells. And third one, there must be a single site for different type of restriction endonucleases. Now we can focus on all these three traits one by one. So plasmid must have low molecular weight. This advantage is that when we have host organism se ya recipient cell se plasmid ko isolate karte hain to agar to iska molecular weight high hoga to shearing forces that may be applied during lysis step to high molecular weight plasmid ki disintegration ho jayegi but on the other hand if the plasmid it is having low molecular weight its handling its isolation it is relatively easy. It remains stable during the lysis step. Secondly, low molecular weight plasmids, they are mainly present as high copy number plasmids. Their number per cell, it is high. So that we can clone number of target DNA by using high copy number plasmids. And finally, if plasmid it is of low molecular weight, then there are chances that single site is present for different type of restriction enzymes. That is, if low molecular weight is there, then multiple substrates sites will not available. Then the next trait that is ability to confer readily selectable phenotypic traits. Jab hum foreign DNA plasmid mein insert karte hain, to humare paas koi way hona chahiye, koi tarika hona chahiye ki hume pata chale ki humara target DNA jo hai, wo plasmid mein insert ho chuka hai. Because uh, there are some circumstances when we cut the plasmid DNA, it can uh, recircularize without the insertion of our target or foreign DNA. So, how it is possible to detect that our target DNA, it has been inserted. So, one of the way is that the plasmid must contain some selectable markers or phenotypes so that we may have an idea that our foreign DNA it is inserted. We discussed previously that plasmids they can harbor different type of uh, traits like uh, antibiotic resistance, antibiotic production, metal resistance and so on. And all these traits, although they are not dispensable for the cell, not required for the survivability of the cell, but when they are present, it can provide the cell a selective advantage over other microbes. So one of the traits like antibiotic resistance, it is frequently used as a selectable marker in gene cloning procedures. Like in some plasmids, ampicillin resistance gene is there, tetracycline resistance is there, and even chloromphenicol or other type of antibiotic resistance markers, they can be encoded by the plasmids. Then the third, a third trait that is mainly related to the presence of single restriction sites for different type of 
restriction endonucleases. Suppose if plasmids contain more than one restriction sites for a single endonuclease, then what will happen? You have the idea that it will cut the plasmid DNA many times so that you can get more than one fragments of the plasmid. That is not suitable for gene cloning procedures. So, for this reason, for different type of restriction enzyme, there must be a one restriction site so that the plasmid can be converted into a linear molecule that can subsequently ligate with target DNA. And if this restriction site it is present within a gene that is readily selectable, it is more advantageous. Suppose we have a tetracycline resistance gene and if the target site is present within this gene then the foreign DNA can be inserted here and after insertion the function of this tetracycline resistance gene it is disrupted it is no more expressing so that cell become will become uh, sensitive to tetracycline and this sensitivity will indicate that the foreign DNA has been inserted in the plasmid. So this process where the function of the gene it become inactivated by the insertion of the foreign DNA it is called as insertional inactivation and this insertional inactivation it is a good trait for the selection of recombinant molecules after introducing it into a recipient cell but this insertional inactivation it is not required when the foreign DNA and the plasmid it is ligated by using homopolymeric tailing and in other cases where the foreign DNA it also encodes a selectable phenotype.